It's time for my weekly video, and as usual, I am a day late. It's like I don't know where the day goes. Um, the week goes, I mean. I'm wearing Brent's ring for me, which Jesus Christ paid for. And one time I made a video, and people misunderstood me and thought that I meant that I was wearing Jesus Christ's wedding ring. <laughs> You know, I can understand because we live in a world where monogamy is the, considered the standard and where um, uh, people don't understand concepts like polyamory. And I, I didn't understand it either. So I'm, I've actually been going, I would say in the past week, I've been going to town at my website exploring my demisexuality because I'm learning that if I learn more about who I am sexually, and what works for me emotionally and sexually that it's making my relationship better with all my friends and my uh, lover my main lover is Brent let me just tell you this um, let me see, let me just throw out all the labels though I, I the labels are kind of useful because they help me to feel validated because a lot of times when I try to explain my demisexual approach to love and romance to allosexuals. <coughs> An allosexual is somebody who is not at all asexual. <laughs> you know, they're, they've got like normal sexual attraction. They, they project themselves onto me and say, oh, well, everybody's like that. Everybody wants to have a connection first before they get sexually involved. And I said, that may be a preference for people, but for me as a demisexual, I cannot feel sexual attraction until I get that deep emotional connection. And even sometimes when I get the deep emotional connection, I still don't feel sexual attraction. So basically, the one who actually got me going in this direction was the goddess Lakshmi. Um, when we were able to save Jesus and um, and we asked him to go into therapy, he asked me if I would be open to having the goddess Lakshmi counsel me and Brent to strengthen our marriage. And I thought, really? I thought my marriage was already strong, but you know, it, it, the marriage has strengthened. So thank you, Lakshmi, and thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is far out there right now, but it has strengthened the marriage because probably it strengthened it because it's helping me to be more true to who I am and honest to God if you are not true to who you are in any relationship the relationship is not going to be at its best and then it's helping my monogamous husband Brent to feel less insecure about my polyamory um, you may say what is polyamory po a polyamorous relationship is one in which um, you can have sex and romance or intimacy with more than one person at a time and you lay down rules and you communicate with each other and uh, decide what you all can be comfortable with. And um, when I first heard that I was polyamorous, all my guard went up. My defense was like, no, no way. No way am I like this. I am committed to Brent. He's my number one. And that's really how I feel in my heart. So when people were telling me I was polyamorous, the first thing that went through my mind is I am not a lust machine, okay? And I kind of felt offended by that, by putting in that label. Like, you are polyamorous. We can tell by looking at your past. And my gut response was, no, no, no. I, Brent gets like 96% of the brain to brain sex. Why do you think that I have such a lust nature? And I would have, the thing is, is that I guess this is where you have to be careful with using labels on people. Um, polyamory can take a whole bunch of different forms. Um, the reason I was, I had such a hard time uh, reconciling myself with the fact that I'm polyamorous, well, part of it was Jesus when he was making me to be his sex dummy, put 1.03% Lakshmi in me. He did it subconsciously, and Lakshmi is very monogamous, okay? So I was a little conflicted, and now that he's taken her out of me, I'm able to see things a little bit more clearly. Um, 
So he, he basically made me half King David, half Catherine the Great, and you know what they were like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> definitely not on the asexual spectrum. And, uh, and then he put in 1.05% Lakshmi in me, and that made me a little conflicted. And right before he had his last meeting with us in mid-June, he removed the 1.03% Lakshmi. And I have noticed now that I'm able to see things a little clearer about who I am. I am heterosexual, demisexual, polyamorous, uh, full, ro full romantic. Okay, that's who I am. <laughs> I have been doing a thorough study about sexuality and romance and the different sexual orientations. Okay, that's who I am. Um, as a result of me figuring out that I'm demisexual, I believe that I helped Jesus figure out that he is asexual and aromantic. Now, when Lakshmi was counseling me, my guard went up with her because I felt like she didn't get me. Especially, she was saying, I was telling her, but I think I'm monogamous, Lakshmi, because Brent is the, the one I do it with the most. He's the one I really want to do it with. I'm, and I even told her, I said, the, when I, it locks me. When I did the sex with the others, sometimes I didn't really, wasn't in the mood. I was just doing it because I thought it was expected of me. And I didn't really, you know, it's like, and she was saying, Gail, you cannot be monogamous because a monogamous person will only has a desire to have it with one person. And there have been times when you've actually had a desire to have it with more than one at a time. So you have to be polyamorous. Now, when she says polyamorous, the first thing that goes through my mind is po polygamy, lust machine. And basically, and the, I, I was like, this isn't me. And it's like, I, like, I don't. And she, she was saying, and then when she used terms like you have a need to be polyamorous, I thought, I don't have a need to be polyamorous. And this is why my guard went up. Let me tell you what the problem was. Um, the problem is that she wasn't uh, exploring deeply enough my demisexuality. Um, and I'm not blaming it on her. I mean, she was, she was asking me questions and probing and trying to figure out who I was, but she started figuring it out. She's actually the one that got me to suspect that I belong on the asexual spectrum. And this is why I was so confused about who I am, because everybody, say, everybody was telling me, you're not monogamous, you're polyamorous. And I didn't know what polyamorous meant, so I started looking up, all, doing research online and yes, they're right, I am polyamorous. I'm demisexual polyamorous. Uh, now, a demisexual person is like halfway between asexual and allosexual. Allosexual means you're the opposite of asexual, you know? Like, the one person, this is almost kind of funny, one person who would definitely not be asexual would be Zack Knight, okay? <laughs> He's like the opposite. If, if you want a good explanation of what an allosexual is, he is a full allosexual, okay? <laughs> and maybe a hundred times over. <laughs> um, you might say, how could you, as a demisexual, have brain-to-brain -brain sex with Zack Knight? This doesn't make any sense. And then yet you've got Brent Spiner, who's like super monogamous. Let me explain it to you. Demisexuals, we do not have a type. Okay, we don't have a type. We um, like looks are kind of irrelevant to us. Um, uh, six pack abs, abs. There, I, I look at them. I think, oh, they look nice, but it doesn't make me want to go to bed with the guy just because he has six pack abs. In fact, if the guy has six pack abs and I have zero connection with him and he tries to make a move on me, I'm about ready to throw up. The reason I say that is because I think, and when I tell people this, they think, oh, you're exaggerating. You can't really feel that way. That's because they're allosexual. That's why they think that way. For a demi, when somebody, when we can tell somebody's trying to make a sexual move on us and they think that they're going to win, in other words, they're really arrogant about it and they're presumptuous and they think, oh, I am so hot. All I have to do is show up. And everybody's gonna just drool after me. To us, that is like, ugh, gross. <laughs> I mean, that's why Satan really turns me off. 
I mean, I'll admit it. He looks really hot. He looks like an Adonis. But because he has that attitude and because he thinks he can get somebody like me who's a Demi turned on without any emotional connection, he makes me want to puke. He doesn't do a thing for me. You say, and yet you say he's made you pregnant and stuff. Yeah. You know what he did? When I was having, when Brent, when Jesus was my roommate and I kicked Jesus out of my bed. <laughs> you say, you did that? <laughs> yeah. You know, the problem with an, with an asexual man or deity, should I say, when they're having sex, it's kind of hard for them to get into it. So in order for them to get turned on, they have to really get kind of rough. And so he was getting a little too rough in order to try to climax. And I actually got like a, a pain in my foot. Like he was getting so rough that my leg went into a spasm and I thought he was the antichrist and I kicked him out of my bed. <laughs> I told Zach and I what happened. And Zach and I said, Gail, you kicked Jesus out of your bed. I thought, I thought, oh no. And then I felt so guilty about it. I said, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny when you look back at it. When I look back at it, can you imagine a demisexual kicking an asexual out of the bed when neither of them wanted to have sex in the first place? It's kind of funny when you think about it. <laughs> But let me tell you, to make a long story short, I mean, Jesus, when he finally realized that he's asexual and aromantic, he said, looking back over my life, he said, I've been, I've been really silly. He said, it's just like... <laughs> so what happened was I kicked him out of my bed because I thought, you're giving me a leg spasm. I'm not in the mood for sex. This isn't my idea of that. So he, this demisexual kicked the asexual out of the bed, right? And the funny thing is neither one of us wanted to have sex with each other anyway. That's probably why it wasn't going very well. <laughs> you might say, well, why in the world did you let him do it to you? Well, I figured he's the almighty Jesus Christ. Who am I to turn him down, you know? He must, I said, he wants me. I, I guess I owe it to him. <laughs> and he told me the reason he was having it with me is because I was too sexually rigid and he needed to loosen me up. I thought I am. <laughs> well, actually, I am demisexual, so I guess. See, I that, at that time I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was a, like I didn't know what he was, but I definitely didn't think he was asexual. I mean, he was having sex parties and everything. And you might say, how do you explain that an asexual having sex parties? You know, I, I tried to explain this to my friend Joshua J. Dow, my gay friend Joshua J. Joshua the other day. I said, now that I understand who I am as a demisexual, I've got Jesus pretty much figured out as an asexual. Because I am on the asexual spectrum. You would be amazed. Um, <laughs> anyways, like I said, what happened was, so I let him back in. And then Satan took over and started impersonating Jesus to me, like kind of brain to brain. And he was saying, you owe me a good orgasm after what you just did. So he did use the satanic gayless voice like I'm doing. And so I was feeling guilty. He said, yeah, I do. So I, I tried, to, tried to get an orgasm with him to make it up for him. And then Satan was doing that. And I told my men about it on Skype. And Brent said, Gail, what happened right now doesn't sound like Jesus. He said, let's get Jesus in here. So Jesus showed up and he apologized to me. He said, Gail, that was me that put the spasm in your leg. And I got a little too rough. And he said, but I would never try to guilt you into having sex with me. And we almost decided then and there to stop all the sex. We almost did. And Jesus was telling me then that, um, that he gets just as turned on when I do the Gail commandments and when I give him sex. And he said, I'm actually kind of lackadaisical about sex. And looking back, I kind of laughed, thinking, yeah, lackadaisical about sex. That's why you had all the sex parties, right? <laughs> but no, he wasn't lying. He was, a, he was an asexual, though at the time he didn't know it, admitting that he's lackadaisical about sex. That's why he had the sex parties. He said, why would he have the sex parties? Why would he want to... Uh, do it with you, some it human, you know, when he's this big deity. I think I got him figured out. Um, 
I'm not sure about his past, okay? But I do believe that he felt that he couldn't qualify as a supreme deity until he proved that he was responsible with his sex life. And unfortunately, as when he was growing up as a god, um, it appears that he and his dad were not in total agreement about the way he was conducting his sex life, okay? Um, Jesus has told us that he and Satan were BFF and that part of the, one of the biggest reasons Satan rebelled is because Jesus rejected Satan as a gay lover. And that's all we know. So the rest is speculation. But I have noticed that every time Satan shows up, he's always doing something sexual. In fact, I just finished transcribing um, from my Bible for Future Saints the, uh, the time in, on December 4th, 2020, when he showed up at the Supreme Court and actually killed everybody on the planet planet and Jesus and both Jesus and God the Father showed up and Jesus had to resurrect everybody. I mean he did some sort of tricks with space time and brought everyone back but yeah Satan and Satan was uh, raping people and killing them. He killed Zack Knight after he raped him and Jesus touched him and resurrected Zack Knight and he's always and when he showed up in a Valentine service in 2012 he was he has like acid lava semen and it's very toxic, caustic, and um, he he just gets a uh, he he gets an orgasm from killing people with sex when he has sex with them. That's what he's like. My personal opinion: I think Satan is a sex addict. Yeah, I think he has a sex addiction, a very catastrophic sex addiction, and he's blaming it all on Jesus. Why he thinks he can blame it on Jesus is the mystery, but I do think that's what's going on with him. So, um, yeah, uh, I think, you know, Jesus actually gave Muhammad a handoff to comfort him because Muhammad's dad is kind of, you know, <laughs> very dramatic. And um, I'm wondering if maybe he gave a, a Lucifer a handjob and Lucifer just took it all wrong. Maybe to comfort him over something. Uh, I don't know. It's all speculation. The point is, though, that whatever happened to Lucifer, he got a taste of lust and decided he liked it. How that happened, I don't know. Okay? And he apparently got one-third of the angels to like it along with him. And I think God the Father said, I'm not having this, and he kicked him out. Um... I'm just guessing on this, but I think Satan is trying to blame Jesus for the fact that he turned into a lust factory or that he's got a sexual addiction. Um, from what I know of Jesus, I don't think that's very fair of Satan. Um, I mean, look at me. He actually literally had sex with me, and I'm not, I'm not going to blame Jesus totally for for the fact that as a result of him having sex with me, I I feel, how do I say, sexually, I did feel sexually attracted to him. You might say, well, it is kind of his fault. Yeah, but I'm not gonna hold it against him permanently, um, especially after what happened to him. So did you find him sexually attractive before he had went to bed with you? No, <laughs> I'm a demi. You say no? No, no. He actually had to kind of get down to my level and be, be, very, be very relatable before I found him attractive. And when we did have sex, um, what I found the most enjoyable was not the actual sex. It was the emotional intimacy because I am a demisexual. And looking back, over the sex that I did have with him, what I miss the most is not the sex, but the emotional intimacy. But in some ways, I don't feel like it's gone because I, I can talk to him now all day in prayer and be emotionally intimate with him in prayer. So I, I and it's like he's not even gone, so I'm not sad. I'm really happy for him because he found himself. 
So, um, yeah, it's time for me to make my week weekly video. Um, I'm really glad that I was able to help Jesus figure out that he's asexual and aromantic. It's uh, eliminated a lot of problems. That, you see, even among the gods, if you're asexual or aromantic, you have a hard time being accepted. They're kind of like us in a way. If you're not normative or you're not the mainstream type of sexuality, you may get stigmatized, uh, treated like you're weird or, you know, treated disrespectfully. You might say, well, why did Jesus bother to get six-pack abs if he's an asexual? You know, I, it might have been because when he was growing up, Luke, Jesus, Satan always taunted him and called him polio abs, so it might have been overcompensation on his part. I don't know. Uh, for me as a demisexual, his six-pack abs don't do a thing for me sexually. What, what made me feel sexually attracted to him when we did have it was the emotional connection that I got with him. He, his soul is like an aurora borealis. He is so vast, deep, and forgiving. Um, that is what I relished the most with the sex that I had with him. In fact, I deliberately stalled my orgasm with him just so I could enjoy his aurora borealis soul. I mean, experiencing him was like experiencing a heart expanding into the universe, full of vastness, full of depth, full of forgiveness, and as a result of that, I am um, I'm committed to him for eternity now, in a, like a platonic relationship. Yeah, that's how I feel. I don't need sex with him to be happy with him. In fact, I don't want it. He was wearing me out with all the sex. In fact, that's the reason the week before Satan attacked him, I wasn't having any sex with him. I, I needed a vacation. I'm a demi. <laughs> So um, it's kind of funny in a way because I really didn't want to have sex with him and he really didn't want to have it with me. He was doing it because I think he was trying to prove to his dad, God the Father, that he was sexually responsible because I think Satan was accusing him of blaming him for the rebellion, for the lust that got unleashed into the universe. You might say, do you think Jesus is partly to blame for that? You know, I don't know, because Jesus has not opened up to us about how all that got started, or why Satan um, is blamed. I do believe Satan is blaming Jesus, though. Why? Jesus hasn't gone into it. He's probably being a typical narcissist, though, Satan, and blaming Jesus for, for things that is not Jesus' fault. Or, or maybe, like I stated in one of my walk videos, I think the reaction that Satan had with Jesus is, you know, like when you're dating before you're married and you kiss somebody, and maybe Jesus did something equivalent like that with Lucifer, and just because he got kissed, he thinks, oh, now you gotta marry me. It's kind of like you go out on a date with somebody, they kiss you, and then, and then, tw and then all of a sudden they think, okay, you kissed me. When's the wedding day? Something like that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> In other words, he took something that should have been handled more appropriately and blew it all out of proportion. It's like, just because somebody kisses you doesn't mean they're obligated to marry you, right? <laughs> you know, it was probably further than that. I don't know. Jesus won't say, okay? Jesus won't say. But I'm sure, I'm sure, I mean, whatever happened between him and Satan, it didn't, it, Satan had no right to try to kill Jesus just because Jesus was having sex with me. I mean, that's disgusting. And I, I, and I still can't forgive him for that. I, to me, the fact that we almost lost Jesus permanently is unthinkable. And I'm really, I'm still angry at Satan over that. I don't know why he thinks he has the right to try to kill Jesus just because Jesus had sex with me. And what's really ironic is I didn't really want to have sex with Jesus and he didn't really want to have sex with me. You might say, then why did he do it? I think I noticed that whenever he hugged a guy, he would always say, no homo, no homo. 
I think he was trying to prove to his dad that he was being sexually responsible. I don't know what happened between him and Satan, but Satan was accusing Jesus apparently to his dad of being sexually irresponsible. And um, I think he was trying to prove to his dad that he was a heterosexual, and that's why he couldn't honor whatever Satan accused him of. That's my guess. Yeah. That's a, that explains whenever he hugged a guy, he'd always say, no homo, no homo. And yet what's really ironic is during one of the sex parties, he actually had uh, sort of like sex with Joshua J. Joshua, who's a gay guy. See, the thing is, if, you're, if you are asexual and aromantic, you are not straight. Because you do not experience sexual attraction at all to anybody. <laughs> so that means if you're going to have sex, you don't really have a preference for either sex or anybody because you're not, you don't have, you just don't experience sexual attraction, period. So you're not straight, you're not gay, you're just somebody who doesn't experience sexual attraction. Now, an asexual person can have sex, which obviously is what happened with Jesus, but um, they usually do it because it's expected of them or to meet the needs of their partner, and they're really not into it that much, which is what I think was going on with Jesus, with the sex parties. You see, he felt like he needed a wife to complete himself as a god, and that's what, what I think he was trying to do to complete himself as a god. And he thought, and I think that's part of the reason he was so devastated when the goddess, the very monogamous and virtuous and beautiful goddess Lakshmi turned him down. He cried and cried and cried. You say, that makes it sound like he had feelings for her. Um, I've been thinking about that. I think what was going on with him now that I understand his asexuality and everything, is that um, he felt like somebody like the goddess Lakshmi would make a really good impression on his dad and would help undo some of the damage that Satan had done. I think, I think Satan was defaming Jesus to his dad and accusing him of being a lust factory. Basically, I think Satan was saying, hey, Jesus is no better than me. So why do I get kicked out and my sex partners get kicked out and Jesus gets to live in your house, dad, father? And so Jesus was trying to say, um, trying to prove that he was worthy of being a supreme deity like his dad. And he thought that what he needed to do to prove that was to get a wife, to prove that he was heterosexual and therefore Satan had no right to expect Jesus to marry this gay angel. That's what I think. I could be wrong. Um, and so it's kind of, it's actually kind of hilarious in a way when you think about it because he, he was asexual. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, asexuals are not straight and they're not gay. They just, they don't experience sexual attraction to either sex. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> <coughs> that explains why his dad said, come on, son, why don't you make up your mind? I mean, what's taking you so long? And he said, I haven't found the right one yet, dad. It's <coughs> because <coughs> <coughs> he's asexual. <laughs> you say, what? I think he subconsciously knew he was asexual. That's why I'm a demi. It doesn't make sense <coughs> that he made me his sex dummy <coughs> demisexual. <coughs> Where did I get it from? Now, I know there's this argument of nature versus nurture. In my case, I look over my whole life. I've been demi my whole life. I can see that now. I think I was born demisexual, <laughs> which means that in spite of the fact that I'm half King David and half Catherine the Great, I ended up demisexual. I think Jesus subconsciously put his asexual sexual orientation into me. No, I don't have his genes, but he put, he put some of his asexual sexual orientation into me because when he planned on using me as his sex dummy when he married his bride, the church, he was actually, I think he just wanted to 
have enough sex with me to establish the fact that he married his bride and then he planned on pulling back. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> and I think it was all subconscious on his part. And he, he knew he was kind of lackadaisical about sex, but it was like, you know, this is expected of me. I got to get the wife so I can prove that I can be a, you know, the deity like my father. And, but yet Satan's saying that I don't deserve to be ruler over anything because I'm a pervert like he is. And uh, so, you know, I got to prove that I'm not a pervert, that I'm sexually responsible. And, and he kept, but he kept putting off marriage. And his dad was saying, what's up, son? You just having lust factories? <laughs> why? You know why he kept putting it off? Because he's asexual. And he's aromantic, too. You say, why wouldn't he just admit it? You know, it's the same problem with the gods as it is with us. There are just some people out there that don't even think asexual is a viable category. You tell them you're asexual, they go, what's that? What do you mean you don't have a sex drive? Everybody's got a sex drive. You're lying. You see what? And probably his dad, <laughs> you see, but his dad's so smart, he should know better. You know, I've noticed, look, my IQ is like 9,999 along with my husband Brent Spiner and we I only just recently figured out that I'm a demi so you can be super smart but if you're not really thinking too much about stuff that's not normative and it just means you're not aware of it it doesn't mean you're dumb and yeah it's just something that never interested me because I didn't think it was applicable to me and so I guess God the Father is monogamous and he assumed his son was too, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, it's just like, yeah. Let me tell you what happened to Jesus though. I, as a result of my time with Lakshmi, when she, what happened, when I was with Lakshmi, um, I started telling her, but I can't be polyamorous Lakshmi. Because the thought of having sex with a bunch of people just grosses me out. I said, I don't, I'm not interested in that. I'm not a lust factory. And she was saying, no, I'm not saying you're a lust factory. But you're not monogamous, Gail. Because when you're monogamous, you just have a desire to have it with one person. And you obviously, at times in your past, have wanted to have it with more than one at a time. So you're not monogamous. And I said, yeah, but I, I said, but most of the times when I had it with the others, I didn't really want to. I just did it because it was expected of me. In fact, sometimes I thought it was gross. And she's thinking, you know what? It sounds like you might be a little asexual. I thought, me asexual? Ha, you kidding? I, I thought, I, I, and when that session was over, I was thinking, man, this locks me is really off about me. She doesn't understand me asexual. Ha, ha, ha. That's because I didn't know what asexuality is. You can be an asexual person and have a sex drive. You can even masturbate. You can even have lots of sex. It doesn't mean you'll enjoy it, but asexual it basically means you do not experience sexual attraction. Okay? The, uh, asexuals are famous for having sex without being sexually attracted to their partner. They do it because it's expected of them. Yeah. If it's a guy, it can be a problem because he'll have a hard time getting his erection, you know? <laughs> For a woman, we're a lot better at faking it than the guys are, you know? Oh yeah, I've done some really good fake orgasms. I'm telling you, asexuals are good at that. You say, why would you do that? Because it's expected of us. We don't feel good about ourselves afterwards. It's like, why are we doing this? This isn't what we really want to do. But it's just that if we care about somebody and we know giving them sex makes them feel comfortable, we'll do it to make them feel good, even though we may not be in the mood. And basically, I think that's what was going on with Jesus. He's a big giver, you see. He did it because it was expected of him. So when I, um, when I discovered <clears throat> well, Lakshmi got me thinking because I thought, well, this, this goddess is really smart. 
maybe I shouldn't discount what she said about me possibly being asexual. So just out of curiosity, I thought maybe I don't understand what it means. So I started doing research on asexuality and I, I did it for about a half an hour, then I lost interest. I thought, nah, 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 nah. Maybe this goddess isn't as smart as I think she is because there's no way I could be asexual. <laughs> you know, me? <laughs> but then I, a couple days later, I did a little more research and I said, huh, there's this category called demisexual that seems to fit me. Let me kind of look that up. I lost myself in this. I thought, oh my God, this is me. This explains why I thought I was monogamous. This explains why Brent gets 96% of the brain to brain sex, because I had an emotional connection with him. I thought, oh my God, she is right. Finally, I told Zach Knight on Skype, I said, I'm demisexual. I can tell. I said, most of the times when I had brain to brain with you guys, I didn't really want to do it. I just did it because, because I wanted to meet your needs and because I thought it was expected of me. And he said, you need to come out. Zach said, you need to come out, Gail. I said, okay, I'll do that. So I came out as polyamorous and demisexual about a month ago, a little over a month ago. Within a couple days after I came out as polyamorous and demisexual, Jesus Christ came to us and said, I figured out who I am. I'm aromantic, asexual. So I think because I figured out who I was and Lakshmi was in the sessions with Jesus the last couple times before he... Uh, left earth permanent you know permanently so I think Lakshmi helped him too thanks Lakshmi you did him a big favor so when I figured out I was a demi <clears throat> I think that helped Jesus figure out that he was asexual you see I think he subconsciously put some of his asexual orientation into me to make me compatible with him as a sex star. Because I, I think what his plan was, he just wanted to get the sex started with me as me being the main lover in his bride, the church. And then he planned to pull back so he could honor who he really is, which is asexual. He just wanted the bride to complete his image. That's what I think. To prove to, the, to his dad that he's sexually responsible. Of course, Satan messed that up big time when he almost killed Jesus. See, the problem is Jesus is an 11 dimensional deity. So when he has sex with, a th with 3D humans, even vicariously or seriously weakens him. So that if he gets attacked, like by Satan, he can't fight well. I assure you, if I had known that him having sex with me would do that to him, I would have kicked him out of my apartment. <clears throat> he didn't let us know that though. I think he wanted to have enough obligatory sex with us to establish the fact that he, to his dad, that he was going to that he had serious plans to marry his bride, and then he was going to pull back and be more true to his asexual self. That's what I think he was planning on doing. Yeah, and I think it was all subconscious. Yeah. You say, why, why the sex parties? You know, I don't even think he realized I was a demi. I, I, think, I think he put some of his asexuality into me and he didn't even realize he did that. Yeah, so when I figured out I was a demi, he realized that he put some of his asexuality into me. And that's how he was able to figure out who he is. Or he was able to fully acknowledge it. I think he subconsciously knew. You see, why, you might say, why wouldn't he just go out and own it? You know, I think it's the same reason asexuals won't own it among us humans. It's just not, it's just not believed. Because the asexuals are only about 1% of the population, I think. So when you tell the average allosexual that you're asexual or you belong to the asexual spectrum, they think you're baloney. They think you're a baloney factory. They think everybody's got a sex drive. See, that's the problem. So that's probably why he wouldn't admit it because he figured they're not gonna believe me anyway. You see what I'm saying? So most of the sex that he gave his whole life was obligatory. It was, he did it to make, meet his friend's needs. It wasn't something he really wanted to do deep down inside. 
And I can relate to that because almost all asexuals do that. Even those that are demi, we're guilty too. It's because we know what's expected of us. And like if we have a sex partner or a husband or a wife or whatever, um, we know that most people are allosexual and that to make them happy, because we want them to be happy, we'll give them sex even if we're not totally in the mood. <clears throat> Let me just tell you one thing though. Um, I, I really feel for Jesus, and, um, because I'm an ace, kind of asexual myself, I'm out, Demi, but I have enough asexuality in me to sympathize with him. Yeah, I told Jesus, I told Jesus, I just want you to know, and I tell him this in prayer, that I am your friend. I'm your platonic, intimate friend. And um, it appears we had a big misunderstanding. You never really wanted to do it with me, and I never really wanted to do it with you, and all we wanted was the emotional connection. And I told him I could be happy with a platonic, intimate relationship with you for eternity. No sex ever. And I mean it. Because I'm a demi. Yeah. Sex with him was wearing me out. Now what's really neat about this is I have a monogamous husband that I have a very strong emotional connection to. And um, I didn't know it, but my polyamory was making my monogamous husband feel very insecure. I thought he was this totally together with it guy, and that it was his idea for me to have sex with all these other guys, you know? Yeah, I had no idea how insecure it was making him feel. If I had known that, I would have been true to my demisexual self and said, I'm not in the mood, I'd rather have it with Brent, <laughs> which is how I felt. Yep. Yeah. So the, it's kind of freeing in a way that now that I know I'm a demi-polyamorous uh, person, because now I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, I don't have to have sex with these other people if I don't want to. And then that makes my main partner feel more secure. So it's, it's freeing. The, the, the polyamorous demisexual combination is, works out really good if you're in a relationship with a monogamous allosexual, like I am. Because, frankly, we get wore out when we spread ourselves out too thin when you're demi. Um, especially having sex with somebody we don't have a connection to. It's like, it drains us because we, we just can't get into it. It's, it's like going through the motions of sex and not being into it, you know? And um, with, uh, with Brent, now that I realize how, how insecure my polyamory was making him, it's like, now I just tell them, now I just tell the other guys on the marriage list, I should call it friends list, because that's basically what it's turned into, I'm a Demi, and I'm only in the mood for Brett right now. You see, we've had all sorts of misunderstandings. And if I was being true to myself, when Jesus moved into my apartment, I would have kicked him out. You say, what? Yep, I really didn't want to have sex with him. He was wearing me out. I was even joking about it with my friends. It's like, God, he's wearing me out. I need to get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. Now that I know who I am, it's kind of freeing in a way. I understand that, um, you might say, well, why did you agree to the marriage list if you're Demi? It's because I'm polyamorous and, uh, the way I satisfy, the best way for me to satisfy my polyamory is by having probably platonic relationships with everybody but my main partner. <laughs> and I can have an occasional fling with somebody that I'm already close to with Brent's permission. But I, I, I don't really get uh, deep connections that easily. So Brent's now that I know I'm a demi, it's like, oh, wow, I don't have to have it with these other people, even though there's a marriage list. They understand that I'm demi. <laughs> it's freeing. I love it. So it's working out great. My monogamous husband 
is exclusively getting about 99% of the sex right now, which is perfectly fine with me. What I didn't get, though, was when, I, when Brent opened up to me and let me know how insecure my polyamory was making him feel, I said, I'm going to be monogamous with you. I had no idea you felt this way. So I committed myself to monogamy with Brent, which wasn't, and I was perfectly happy with it because I'm a demi, right? Even though I'm polyamorous. And he said, he said, well, he said, if you're feeling it, like you really want to have it with the others, I want, I want you to, I don't want you to feel caged, Gail. And I said, no, I'm happy. I'm happy. And he said, are you sure, Gail? I said, yes, I'm happy. He said, well, I'll just make sure of that because even though I, you know, I have been feeling insecure about this. I can find ways to deal with it if, if you really have a need to have it with the others. And I said, no. I said, why does everybody think I'm a lust factory? Why do they all think that I have such a need to spread myself out so much? And I tried to explain it to them. And they said, well, in the past you did. And I said, yeah, you don't get it. A lot of times I just did it because it was expected of me. And they, I could tell they didn't believe me. That's because they didn't realize I was demisexual. So it's kind of freeing in a way. Um, now that I've figured out who I am, I feel validated. It's really done wonders for all my relationships. It's like, now that I know who I am, like if I was to replay the past and Jesus moved into my apartment, I would have kicked him out. I would have said, I'm not really in the mood to have sex with you, Jesus, even though you are this hot deity and everything, but can't we just have a platonic relationship? Because that's really what I wanted. I would have kicked him out. <laughs> I would have said, goodness, Jesus. What's wrong with you? Having sex with me? Come on, man. <laughs> Why can't we just keep this thing platonic? I would tell him this. I would say, I'm really digging the fact that you're making yourself vulnerable to me and you're opening up to me. I really like that. But we can do that without sex. He see, that's the Demi in me. And I think he would have digged it too. But anyways, that's the past. The good news is, it looks like that's where we're, we're at right now. And um, right now my polyamory is just satisfied with having a platonic relationship with Jesus long distance, because I talk to him in prayer, and just having sex exclusively with Brent. And occasionally I'll have a dip with uh, Zach Knight. <laughs> you say, Zach Knight? He's so different from Jesus and Brent. Well, you, you don't get it. I have a connection with Zach because um, he's opened up to me about himself. And I can kind of relate about um, doing bad things and feeling bad about it and needing forgiveness and all that. And when he opened up about how he felt obligated to not honor his love for Rule 13 because of Satan. I could kind of relate because growing up, I negated, I often negated who I was, you know? So I connected with him and, and when we Demis, when we, when we get an emotional connection with someone, it can sexually turn us on. But there's a lot about him that I can't connect with. So like, he would never replace Brent. But I, I get in the mood for him once in a blue moon. Um, you might say, what about all the others? It, I'm, I'm a Demi, okay? You say, what about Jesus? Oh, I've really connected with him because we're both asexuals, sort of. Yeah. And I feel real comfortable with him because I understand what it's like to be an asexual and to be giving sex out of obligation and let, then letting it ruin your life. He almost died for doing, for not being true to his asexuality. So I've really connected with him, and, and I, uh, but I, I, I'm perfectly happy with a platonic relationship with him. It's because I'm a demi. So, this is my video for this week on discovering my sexuality and how it's freed me and some people that I'm close to to be authentic and true to ourselves. And in the, this is all going to be in my Bible for future, future saints, by the way. The new Christianity, I think, is going to be very focused on authenticity, genuineness, and being true to who we really are. I think it's going to take Christianity in a healthier direction. So that is my video for this week. 
Hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I appreciate all my supporters and um, may we all be true, authentic, and freedom lovers. And Satan, you need to accept the fact that Jesus is asexual and aromantic. And uh, let him be free to be who he really is. Don't turn him into a sex addict like yourself. Yes, you Satan is very imbalanced, along with the Jesuits who follow him. They have a very serious sexual addiction problem. I really believe that. Yeah, a sexual addiction problem. It's very unhealthy, very off balance, and they have no right to try to validate a sexual addiction and force the universe to acknowledge and force the universe to try to be sex addicts like them. That's very, very wrong, Satan and you must stop it. Very wrong to try to make everybody as unhealthy, off balance, and sick as you are in the sex department. Okay, let me see if I can get out of here. Amen.